Java conference uh, will be, my lecture, let's say, will be on uh, molecular machines. And um, I will introduce it by speaking uh, about um, how we started in this field and even before we started, how we came uh, to this field of molecular machines. It's important because it's a new concept. Molecules were considered as motionless objects, objects which do not move. And uh, since the contributions of several groups in the world, uh, the, the image we have of molecules has been completely changed uh, because nowadays we can make molecules which move in a very strictly controlled fashion, such as uh, linear motors, uh, rotary motors, uh, compressors, uh, tiny muscles at the molecular level. And this is really new. It's kind of a revolution in the molecular sciences. Now, in terms of applications, you know, let's say societal uh, impact, um, so there are already a few applications of uh, interlocking rings, you know, rings like that, um, and in particular in the field of uh, intelligent materials. Materials which behave in a very special way. Um, and there are companies in Japan and in Korea, mostly, uh, using this concept of interlocking rings uh, incorporated in uh, films, in polymers, um, leading to highly flexible films, which you can fold as many times as you like, but which will never break. But probably the most important applications will be for the future in uh, computing, molecular computing, we call that. Uh, it's a means for storing information and processing information using molecules mm -hmm. and no more transistors. Nowadays, we are using transistors, silicon-based transistors. But molecules are very, very tiny, and we can go even go down in terms of uh, dimensions and store and process information using molecules. It's a big project. And another very exciting field of research is related to uh, applications in, uh, in medicine, and in particular um, in uh, targeting uh, the action of drugs. So uh, let's say uh, using drugs in association with a molecular machine, uh, which will carry the drug where it has to be delivered uh, as close as possible to a cancer cell or to a virus or a bacterium. And for the future, I think it's going to be a very important field of applications. Spanish scientists, I mean, there were several uh, postdoctoral researchers in my group. Um, and these postdoctoral Spanish researchers uh, were great scientists. Uh, this is also why, you know, we kept contact, very tight contact. Um, and I honestly, I mean, I do not say that because I'm in Spain, but honestly, uh, those young scientists have been among the very best scientists I worked with in my group. And so I have lots of contact, you know, with uh, Spanish scientists, mostly chemists. Um, of course, those I know are really excellent scientists. Um, I have contacts in particular at um, um, Universidad Politecnica de Valencia, uh, but also with other, other people in Madrid, in uh, Granada, in, uh, where in, in many, many places, um, in uh, Santiago de Compostela. Um, now coming to the second part of your question, um, I think there are very, very good scientists in Spain, but they cannot always 
uh, find what they need in terms of doing research, uh, having funds for doing research, and very unfortunately for the country, um, quite a large proportion of them go abroad. They go to other European countries, including France, or they go to, to the US. And it's a big loss for the country. Especially when they go to US, to the US, it's a big loss for Europe. Um, and the reason is not clear to me, but I think that the country could uh, probably devote uh, more money to science, to research. And the budget of research in Spain is, um, could be higher, let's say.